everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi there, stranger. Just as you said your name, a cold draft of air came out of <laughs> my vent. <laughs> that sounds like something out of Animal Crossing. I don't know. Just like <laughs> cold draft. I'm so happy to be here today. I have lots to tell you about. Raylene. Oh, good. And lots to tell, therefore, the listeners mm. about. <laughs> How has your week been, though? How or your weekend? You celebrated your birthday. <sighs> yeah, it was a it was a lot. It was a big week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a lot. I mean, it was a lot, but at the same time, I also didn't do that many things. Like, I actually nice. took the entire week off of work, like my regular job and stuff. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna relax, gonna big chill, as I yeah. as I called it all week long. I was like, I'm big chilling. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so- <laughs> The big chill. I was just course. really chillaxing, which was really nice, honestly. Like I I don't like being busy and when I'm too busy it really like scares me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just need to like unwind in a big yeah. way. And so I got to do that, which was really nice. I nice. did a bunch of reading. I watched a ton of my favorite movies, which was something I oh. wanted to do during my week off. I was like, you know what? It's my birthday week. I'm gonna just like do my favorite things. So Hell yeah. I did that and it was really fun. But I also had my birthday party with my friends so as i've talked about me and julia plan a big party for our friend's birthday in october and then they planned a party for me and that was just a couple of days ago and it was so much fun they did like an astrology theme because i'm a scorpio it was kind of like a scorpio themed party but it was more broadly just like astrology so there was like stars everywhere and Uh, like the vibe was really nice there was lots of blue light bulbs everyone needs to go to your instagram because yeah. you posted some photos and the vibes are so cool yeah. at this party yeah it yeah i really walked neat. in and i was like whoa it's so like groovy in here and like yeah, yeah just like low light blue stars uh the drinks were made with like charcoal so everything was very like oh, cool looking cool. it was a lot of fun it was Did a that lot of fun. go on your teeth um I don't know. I didn't look at you myself. You just felt your teeth in that moment. You're like, oh, I don't think so. It's like, hmm. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think it was safe. I think it was okay. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I had a I had a good time. But yeah, other than that, it was a very relaxing week. I didn't really do much. Mm. I kind of just laid around, which was really nice. I love that. Um, oh, yeah, one I other thing awesome. I wanted to say that I did, though, <laughs> throughout yeah. the past week and a half-ish, I went to two trivia nights at a pub. <laughs> Yes. I think I told you, you about this, but mm-hmm. so the first one I went to was Shrek trivia. <laughs> and then the following week was Twilight trivia. <laughs> and it was just too oh, yeah. perfect because me and one of my friends, like those are the two pieces of media that we both love together and like the only ones really that we really like enjoy together. And so it was a weird coincidence, but it was lots of fun. We didn't play such Shrek trivia, but we came in third at Twilight trivia. So it was fun. It was it was kind of hard though. They made it really hard. Like one of That's the really one of the questions was how many vampires come to help the Cullens, or like how many vampires are there total in that last battle? And I was 61. like, one. What? Sixty one. Oh, I thought you guessed it right for a second. No, it's thirty one. For anybody else out there who's going to trivia, we were sitting there like yeah. trying to tally them all up, and we were like, I don't yeah. know, twenty. <laughs> we were so I, wrong. Oh God, I. God. I know that this is not the point of the story, but I always have just, every time I think about that final battle, I just feel so cringe. It's so anticlimactic. Like, literally really two is. and a half books. Like, since basically New Moon. Yeah. And then all the way to the end of Breaking Dawn is building up to this battle. It's true. Okay? <laughs> this is going to be the Return of the King-esque yeah, battle. Yeah, yeah. And then it's over in five minutes. There's actually only 30 vampires there. Everyone just shakes hands and goes home. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? It's Diplomacy? pretty crazy. Oh, man. That's frustrating. That's frustrating stuff. Anyways, uh, go on. How, what about Shrek? Do you have any examples of the Shrek questions? Because that's something that really intrigues me. Yeah, it was actually kind of <laughs> difficult because... Um, <laughs> There was five rounds, and at the beginning okay. of the night, they were like, there's one round for each movie. And so all of us started freaking out. We're oh. like, is there a fifth Shrek movie we don't know about? Are they including, like, Christmas specials? Like, we started to freak out a little, so we were like, uh-oh. Um, but luckily, I rewatched Shrek 1 and 2 exactly the yes. night before, so I was really powerful for Shrek 1 and 2. Genius. So there was, like, little questions, like, at the beginning of Shrek 2, who is narrating the story of Fiona's life? 
And oh, I'm like, Prince Charming, it right? is, but I would have had okay. no idea. I would have not yeah, remembered yeah, yeah. that. And so it was just like, there was lots of little things like that, that I was able to remember. But when I got to Shrek the third, I had oh, no shit. idea. It's been years <laughs> since I've seen that movie. I've only seen Shrek forever after one time. And it was like 10 yeah. years ago. So we just like made a lot of educated guesses and actually mm-hmm. did pretty well. Like we were like, okay, like fairy tales, you know? Like, we can figure yeah. this out. Like, that guy's name so is probably true. Lancelot, that guy they're talking about. I bet that's Lancelot. Oh, that one, you know, it's Rumpelstiltskin, <laughs> so we could probably kind of figure out what, what he did. So yeah. I can't think of any of the questions. But anyways, round five was quotes, which was really fun. So oh, it was just quotes, and we had to guess who said them. And some of them were surprising. Oh, some of them were surprising. I... There's one part where Shrek says, bro, apparently, or something like that. And we were like, <laughs> what? There's no way. There's no way that that's was Shrek. So <laughs> but apparently sick. it was. It's like everything about Shrek is a reason for it to fail, but <laughs> yeah. somehow it's one of the best animated movies it of really all time. It really is. It really is. God, I love Shrek. And it came out over 20 years ago, so let just That's let that scary. sink in for a bit. We saw that when it came out. Like, Yeah, we did. We, we were kids and we were ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we started watching Shrek. Christmas movies around here. Oh. Um, because my mom's birthday was two days ago mm. and on her birthday, she likes to set up the Christmas tree. This has been the right. tradition since I was a child. So we set up the Christmas tree and then we watched a Christmas movie and it kind of like starts the holidays. Like it's yeah. like, we're in holidays now. Nice. Um, and, and we watched the Santa Claus. Oh yeah. I was watching it and it, my mom was like, when is this movie from? 1994, and I, I betcha. 1994. You know yeah, how I know that? From, why? My mom was watching that movie when she was in labor with me. <laughs> or how would you say that? So, Isn't yeah, that funny? Yeah. That's so interesting <laughs> because it, it said it came out on November 11th yeah. of, of 1994. And so, so you were born a couple days later. Yeah. yeah. My mom literally went <laughs> to go see crazy. it in the theater. And to this day, it's like her favorite Christmas movie. She loves that movie so uh, much. That's so beautiful. Oh, I love that fun fact. That's such <laughs> a you. fun fact. <laughs> Now you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, Jesus, like this movie is 32 years old. Like what happened? <laughs> We're so old. <laughs> I was, okay, this is kind of an aside, but I was thinking of taking a, a short course, like a month long course in in Italy. I Let's put that all aside. <laughs> like, I know. Course I know. We'll in come what? back to it. Santa Claus uh, book binding. Oh, <laughs> book binding. Okay, but anyways, it can't work. It doesn't work. It's happening while I'm doing the end of Green Gables pilgrimage. Ah, so dang. sadly, what a conflict of interest. Right. Um. But yeah. Anyways, I can't do it. But I was corresponding with them to try and understand like how much does it cost? Mm. Blah blah blah. And I asked, "Is this for like students?" Because I I couldn't tell from the pictures and yeah. stuff if 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 this is like for 19, 20 year olds or right. teenagers or like any age or what. I was like, I'm 29 and I don't want to be a lot older than everyone there. Yeah. I just felt so old looking at these pictures <laughs> of like people in their undergrads and like like studying abroad. Mm-hmm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was like, that's not me anymore. It was <laughs> once and I loved it, but it's not anymore. And the guy replied to me and it's just this Italian man. <laughs> and he, <laughs> I forget his name, but it was something like Giorgio. You yeah, know? It was like a really Italian name. It was awesome. And he was like, uh, he was like, I think it's so funny that you have called yourself older. 29 is so young. And I was like, man, I needed to hear that. Thank you, Giorgio. <laughs> oh, you were, you're the best, Giorgio. You're the best. <laughs> oh, Giorgio, I needed that. Uh, but yeah, speaking of which, how do you feel? You're, you've now been 29 for a week. How's 29. Man, the wrinkles around my eyes, they're, yeah. they're popping. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're scrunching. They're scrunching right up. Yep. <laughs> I mean, they are, but that's been happening for years now. Um, <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't really feel different. I think 30 will be more of a mental attack on, yeah. on me. Yeah. But I, I 29 mm-hmm. feels no different from 28. Like, okay. I don't know. There's something about, like, I feel like the jump from, like, 25 to 26 feels really big. Yeah. Like, that's when you're, yeah. you know, in the latter half of of your 20s but now i'm like i was already in my late 20s i'm still here yep. it's fun it's chill yeah. so i don't i don't really bother myself about it too much okay i also we'll, like we'll check you in. know i like that i have a late birthday in the year like i'm younger than all my yeah. friends pretty much so that feels pretty cool 
<laughs> yeah, I even feel that way because my birthday is at the yeah. very end of September. And so when I started the next grade, I was I still had a whole month of being mm. a year younger than yeah. everyone else, yeah. basically. Um, somehow that was psychologically really mattered to me. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like when we turn 30, we're going to listen to 30 by Bo Burnham a lot. Oh, 100%. That I haven't stopped thinking about that song since, since you know, for the past up. month. Yeah. I was like, I really wish that I could listen to that song on my 30th or on my 29th birthday, but it wouldn't it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't it work. It wouldn't work. <laughs> but it's true. Like when he there's one lyric, I think it's in that song, but he's like, I used to be the youngest one. Yeah. Like everyone's surprised that he's born in the 1990. Yeah. And yeah. like he's always the youngest one. And I'm like. I'm right. I'm almost out of that. I know. I'm I like, I could relate to that. Like I remember yeah. when we were like 20 or 21, people were like, "Oh my gosh, that's so amazing! You like you've you know you are you've already moved out, and you've done all these things." And I'm like, right. "Yeah, cool." And now I'm like, "Wow, I haven't done more than that." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, it's so. True. I haven't advanced I, much I since a, then. I had a very similar conversation with a friend literally yesterday, where I was like. You know, I I felt like I maybe I've peaked a little early. Like I did so <laughs> yeah. many cool things in my early twenties. I'm like, I guess it's time for reinvention. I guess. Phase two. Go to oh, Italy yeah, and yeah. hang out with Georgia. Yeah. Go to Italy and hang out with Georgia. Oh shoot, that's awesome. Um all right, let's move on to, to happier things, I suppose. Uh, it's pretty happy though. Yeah. I love that we're the same age. Yeah. Like that's nice. You're only a, a month and a half younger than me so i'm like we're basically going through life together we really and are it's like it's perfect because it's it it's so lucky because raylene and i don't know each other from school we don't know yeah. each other through family friends yeah that's we, true we have nothing to do with one another <laughs> like we're strangers you just, passing you just the night. started making youtube <laughs> you just started making youtube videos a month after i started making yeah. youtube videos so we just it's so lucky that we found each other when we were both 16 that's true and i was saying someone was saying to my friend someone was saying to me a friend was saying to me like oh yeah i'm gonna see my friend tomorrow she's like my oldest friend the friend i've known mm. since i was little and or like since i was a teen yeah. i was like how old were you when you met her she's like we met in high school when we were 16 i was like raylene is my oldest friend <laughs> It's like, oh my well, god, wait a second. Because we, even though we met through a weird way, like even though we met through the internet, yeah. you're the person I know from the longest ago now. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's also because I, every time I move, I'm like, okay, bye, new life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to talk to anyone from that past era, moving into the new era. But like with my internet friends, it's different because you guys follow I me. Follow I follow you everywhere you go. You can't escape me. You follow me. I can't escape really. And I Sorry. wouldn't want to. Oh, huh. that's nice. Um, okay. Well, speaking of birthday, maybe let's start with a little birthday haul because I was in Chicago. <laughs> we will get to that. But <laughs> while I was in Chicago, my birthday present arrived yes. to your house. Yes. It was the day after your birthday yeah, that it, it arrived to your well. house. And But we weren't going to be recording the podcast for another week. Yeah. So we decided you should just open it. Have fun enjoy yeah make the festivities happen i therefore called raylene on facetime while sitting in a park mm -hmm. in a random suburb of chicago and uh, at one point a dog attacked i was gonna me. mention was the dog if you didn't bring it up that was crazy <laughs> it was so lucky a, i was just talking to raylene and then all of a sudden a dog jumped on my body <laughs> And it's the like, older, hey, oh god what's going Wait, on? listen it it was a nice dog so it was totally fine but the owner did that thing that I hate when dog owners do where they like assume you like their dog as much as oh, they like their dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's like, ha ha, yay. And I'm like, dude. What if I was scared? <laughs> what if I don't like dogs or something? Yeah, seriously. Anyway, it was fine. Uh, it was a fun, happy beagle. Yeah. It was a happy beagle. We love a Who dog. Who can complain? Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we called on FaceTime and you opened your gift. So we're not doing a live opening, but you're, yeah, let's show what you got. But yes. also, I think you had some other stuff to haul as well. Yeah, I'll actually start with the two books that my mom gave me first because oh, cool, I got yeah. them first chronologically. So mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah, a couple, like a day before my birthday, I hung out with my mom and my brother. We like, my mom and I went and got our nails done and Cute. then my mom gave what me what color did you get oh i got this like i'll show it to the camera it's kind of like a gray yeah. green it's kind of hard to see Ooh. in this lighting but 
yeah, yeah. No, I love it's it. a really nice gray green which i think might be it's like pretty. my favorite vibe now just like mm. slightly off colors of gray <laughs> i really like that i did i also got my nails done this week and i got like a shrek green Ooh. and a pink wow mix edgy uh for an kind I of retro know, know. colors almost yeah cool. yeah totally very awesome anyway, go on. so <laughs> yeah and then my mom gave me a couple of books which i was overjoyed about because my family yeah. never give me books because they just don't know what to buy for me but i was like please totally. i literally have a wish list on indigo right. here it is right. just pick one or two books from there and i'll be happy <laughs> and so my mom did that and i was very happy that's so nice so the first book she got for me is how high we go in the dark by sequoia nagamatsu oh yeah i've seen that which one. i've just been seeing it around but our buddy max read it uh, i think this year uh, and yeah. loved it oh, and book. just looking at the back um there's like a little blurb that says for fans of cloud atlas and station 11 a spellbinding and profoundly prescient work of mind-bending imagination Whew sounds wow. pretty cool it takes place in the near future and i think i don't really remember what it's about but cool. i really wanted it when i um yeah. decided i wanted it so i i also kind of <laughs> like going into books without knowing too much but i think you know that kind of gives cool. you a bit of an idea it's like station 11-esque so it's near future and there's probably an apocalypse if max is listening <laughs> max hi max hello max uh if everyone wants to find him on instagram it's well done books mm -hmm. Max, if you're listening, I really think that you should consider submitting reviews to magazines and newspapers. <laughs> like, yeah. I genuinely think that you should be a legit, and well, well let's erase the word legit, because obviously what we do online is legit as well, but yeah. like a published I agree. book critic. Because you have such good taste in books, mm -hmm. and you always know exactly what to say to pitch them correctly. Yeah. And there's loads of books that Max loves, but because of the way he reviews them, I know I wouldn't love. Yeah. Like, you're very honest about the way that you review books. I love your reviews. I trust, like, you are one of the few people who online who I truly trust, where I'm like, oh, if Max that. liked it, it's good. Yeah. It's gonna be good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so consider a career pivot. Go, okay, thank you. Well, that was beautiful. A review of Max's reviews. Wow, shoot. I love that. And then the other book my mom got me is "Are You <gasps> Listening" by Tilly Walden, oh, really? which yeah. um, I've pro I'm probably like I'm sure a lot of people have told me to read this, but I remember distinctly one of our patrons was like, "This is a oh, cat okay. book. You need to read this." And I, as we all may remember and know, I've been reading a lot of Tilly Walden. Like, I think I've read three or four of her books now over yeah. the past couple of years. Um, yeah. I still think On a Sunbeam is my favorite. I don't know if anything will mm. ever top that. But I am still on a quest to read all of her books because they're just cool. so pretty. I'll put some B-roll of the, the art. It's just cool. It's just stunning, you know? Stunning. stunning. So I'm really happy about that. So th that was just like a nice surprise because I wasn't expecting That's to so get cool. books from my mom. So that was a lovely little surprise. But now moving into the books that you got me and a couple of other I little things. I have a question. Yeah? I have a question. When someone buys you a book from your Indigo wishlist, does it erase? from your wish list or uh no i had to, to i had in. to go in and erase them because they were still there yeah. but okay. if i buy a book myself that's of a book that's on my wish list it does disappear which i think is a really stupid system <laughs> 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 and i discovered that because i ordered myself a book yesterday Interesting. as well but yeah isn't okay. that crazy you'd think yeah, it's kind of crazy. you'd think it yeah. would do something i mean maybe think. it does something that like signals to other people who aren't me that it's been purchased but i can't verify that because yeah. I am me, you know what I mean? Like I've maybe if you were to look at the list, it would be like someone right. already bought this. Uh, so I don't know. I've never used that system before, so I didn't know how it worked, but. They also changed their okay. system. Do you remember? We were like, we got an email okay. from Indigo that was like, make sure to sit, to take screenshots of all your wish lists because they're gonna disappear. <laughs> we were like, what? Yeah. I mean, do you remember their hack? They were hacked for what, three months? The system was down. It was for, crazy. Like, it was wild. <laughs> it was a crazy was time wild. for us all. It was crazy. <laughs> Well, moving into the things that you gave me, I'll start with the mm. kind of non-book items first. So first of all, you got me this adorable little puzzle, which I'll show yeah. in the B-roll as well. It's just this very cute, like very pink puzzle yeah. uh, with like some red touches and there's like a little lady in there, but it's like a 100 piece puzzle. So like genuinely very small, which I'm excited about. I haven't done Can it yet, but I plan to soon. who the artist is again? Is it Jacqueline Hill? I feel like that might have been her question. name. question. Um, Janet Hill, Janet, Janet Hill Studio. Hill. Okay. That's that's yeah. the name. She's on the cool. Back. She's really she cool. She seems very cool. 
She's a painter and children's book author slash illustrator. Mm. Very good. Mm. Did you get some puzzle ASMR there? Yeah. <laughs> and then a- another cool thing you got me was this little ornament that looks like Simon. It's a cat, a black yes. and white cat. He kind of looks stern, which is perfect because Simon is pretty stern. And actually something else that's funny is that Ariel wrote all these little like notes for every single present i didn't keep all of them because some of them just didn't make sense to keep but this one is attached still and it just says it's simon i've had this for over a year (laughs) which i really like i i bought that ornament for raylene last year when i was in england and it must have been like september or october time yeah and then I was going to give it to your birth for your birthday. I forgot. And I was like, no problem. I'll give it to her for Christmas. Forgot. And so I've had it in my drawer for literally an entire calendar year. Oh my year. gosh. And finally I was like, it's happening. <laughs> I'm shipping it. If it hadn't happened this year, I'd say that just it belongs to you now. Like it's no, no longer no, I forgot if I told you, but I also have the cat. No way. <laughs> yeah. So we now have matching cat ornaments, That's which so I funny. love. But... Yeah, no, I was like, no, I can't keep it. I already have one. Oh, that makes perfect sense then. Okay. Because, yeah, otherwise I would have said, just keep it. Just keep it, man. Save yourself the stress. Okay. Now, actually, there's before I get into the books you gave me, I also have a very magnificent thing that you made for me. Ariel made me a book, guys. (laughs) With custom paper made by Ariel. Everything Mm -hmm. is beautiful and made by Ariel. And this is something we both love (laughs) is that it lays flat. (laughs) So I'm just showing the camera that flat it's so pretty thank you so much for this by the way like Uh, i couldn't believe it it was such a special treat and it was really fun because i sent raylene like photos of all the different (sighs) papers she could choose from like do you want gridded white gray paper and Mm -hmm. you wanted kind of a grayish paper and then i said do you want uh uh like what size of book do you want we can do a little book a medium book a large book and so you you really got to pick everything about it but the most fun was i sent her a video where I flipped through every single marbled paper that oh I made. Yeah. And I would, I, my, in my little system, I made like a visual catalog. <laughs> I would like tally, I would like put a new sheet tally, new sheet tally, new sheet yeah. tally. And I was like, which ones do you want? And you were like, I like 15, 36, and 42. It was so hard because I was at work too. So I just kept like going through the video to try and, and I like didn't have anything to write with because I was on lunch. So I was like, oh, I gotta remember what which ones I like. And then I just said, just pick for me because like I couldn't decide. There was too many beautiful yeah, ones I and i was really four that narrowing it down yeah i mean i liked yeah. so many of them but i was like this is a very special book it has to it has to scream raylene and so i wanted yeah. to get something that like had my color on it i have a very specific color i love as you know um yes so that's that's I, what i did i'm really glad with the ones that you picked because yeah. i really like them too but it's not really my style so mm. i wasn't gonna probably use it for myself yeah so the fact that like they were your favorite i was like that's perfect it just worked perfect. out just worked out great so yes that is the stuff that you gave me and then ariel also gave me three books which is that's always cool. very fun the first one being a copy of the great gatsby that miraculously i didn't have a miracle just somehow i took a you gamble. nailed that <laughs> <laughs> it was actually kind of funny i um I found a copy of The Great Gatsby the other day when I was at a thrift store and I couldn't remember if I had it or not. And so I bought it because it was only a dollar. And I got home and I was like, I have this one. It was Shoot. slightly different, though. It was funny. Like, the cover looked the same. The ISBN was the same. But it was published by, it was like a different publisher or something. And I was oh, like, how? Odd. What? Huh? I was so confused. It was an old <laughs> copy. So it was, it's okay. a mystery. We'll never know. But yeah, this one's very cool. It's like a mm-hmm. older kind of Scribner's copy. And it's red. And it's pretty cool pretty it doesn't feel like a great gatsby color no it red. really doesn't great gatsby is always blue like blue is yeah. the color so which is weird you'd think it would be green or gold you or something you would think it would be green yeah. or gold totally <laughs> those, those are the two like... iconic colors from the book yeah, but that's weird blue yeah never really thought about that why is it blue <laughs> okay and then this one is probably the one i'm most excited about because i have mm-hmm. never heard of it don't know anything about this it's called nails and eyes by kaori fujino and you were the one that was t- kind of telling me about this. You saw this on a list of like cool new horror books or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't remember exactly why I was doing this, but I was looking at a list of horror novels mm. and it wasn't for you. Like I wasn't birthday shopping <laughs> It was just happening. Yet. I was just like looking at a list of horror books. And as I was scrolling through, I think it was for a recommendation request or oh, something for yeah. Patreon. Oh, makes sense. I forget. But I was scrolling through and it was like, this new release is one of our favorites of the year. Mm. Nails and Eyes is Japanese translated horror at its finest. <laughs> or some, you know, something like that. Yeah. And I was like, 
I'm gonna buy that for Raylene. And I bought it for you. I'm so and now I'm annoyed that I didn't buy it for myself because it sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, I'll read the back. It's very short. Uh, apparently, it won the uh, Akutagawa Prize. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it yeah. says, a young girl loses her mother and her father blindly invites his secret lover into the family home to care for her. It's, it was funny. When we were on our call, I, w I read that silently to myself and I just said, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> As she obsessively tries to curate a pristine life, this new interloper remains indifferent to the girl who seems to record her every move, and she realizes only too late all that she has failed to see. Uh -oh. And it says it's all there's it's paired with two additional short stories of oh, unsettled cool. minds and creeping tension. And it's a short book, so I'm like, oh boy, yeah. this is gonna be it's gonna be a you know, a powerhouse of a book. It's just gonna be I like, think it's gonna boom, be a boom, zippy boom. quick read, as my friend Raylene would say. <laughs> Yeah. Zippy quick. <laughs> Zippy quick. <laughs> uh, I do say that a lot. That's true. And then the final book that Ariel got for me is The Maids by Junichiro Tanizaki, which I had never heard of, but this mm -hmm. was a very personalized gift and something only you would give me because you know my reading so well. So this is the author who wrote The Makioka Sisters, but not only yes. that, this is like a companion to The Makioka Sisters and yeah. it follows the, the maids and like the house staff that live yeah. um, with this family that is like the story of the Makioka sisters is all about, which is just so fun. And it's funny because I've heard of books like that for like Pride and Prejudice. Like I know there's a few books yeah. like that. And yeah. so like I know of the concept, but I didn't even know that it existed for this. And yeah, it's written by so, the same author. Like it's not a kind of like a spinoff yeah, by a I different author, that, which it usually is. I found that at Friction Books. Oh! which I, I, yeah. I talked about in another episode and that I loved. And there was just so many good things that I pulled that one down and I was like, wow, it's a bad cover. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it's really ugly. Um, but then I started reading the synopsis and I was like, wait, this is the Makioka sisters, but like a slightly different perspective. Yeah. And like, I was like, okay, hold on. That's one of Raylene's favorite reads of the year. Like, is the is this from the same author? I couldn't tell because oh. I didn't remember the name of the author. Yeah. So I like Googled it and everything. And it was like, yeah, this is like a really award-winning companion novel written by the same author. I was like, this is too cool. Like it is it's so niche. And I would never see that. It. I don't think I would ever find that anywhere else. So I know it this is out. what I'm telling you. Friction Books had some cool stuff. That's awesome. So that's everything that Ariel got for me. So thank you so much. Um, You're I did get one more book though um, from Ooh, my friend. Okay. So I'll just briefly show off that one. So my friend got me Yellow Face oh, by yeah. R.F. Quang. And this was really fun because she actually thrifted this. Like somehow she found this hmm. for like two bucks and she texted me about it a few months ago and asked if I wanted it. And I said, yes. And then she never gave it to me. So I was like, I guess it's a birthday <laughs> present, which was fun though. Cause I was like, I was excited. I was hyped about it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's, that's one that I, I almost bought that one new so many times. Like since it came mm. out, I really, really wanted to get it, but I never did. And now I have it. So I'm happy. So I got like a cute Zelda. little rainbow of books almost. Um, today yeah. lots of lots of cute colors um in in my stack up to, upcoming as well you'll see Ooh. And from what i've read like, but yeah that's like my whole haul coming. that's my whole haul okay i love that now you should do you have some good stuff if i do say so myself yeah yeah um, it was a nice <laughs> a very nice birthday treat so all right i went to new york and chicago mm. i as you know have some beautiful perfect friends in new york city and i love visiting them and i love showing up for almost no reason at all yeah <laughs> so basically like earlier this year it was in march now but um a while ago but in march kaylee who we love kaylee was like uh invited me to her birthday party mm. i was like yeah i will come all the way to new york for your birthday party and then uh, yeah, this is what happened again. She invited me to her Thanksgiving Friendsgiving mm. dinner. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to come <laughs> to New York for your Friendsgiving yeah. dinner. <laughs> um, and so I had a really fun four days in New York. I got to hang out with Kaylee and Monica, who we've had on the podcast. Mm -hmm. We've had Monica before. And our friends, Jeffrey and Jeremy, mm -hmm. were... I. God, I love seeing... I love hugging them. They're so tall. <laughs> They're very tall. <laughs> uh, I love them. I love all of them so much. And it was just really lovely to get to see them and go to bookshops and yeah. hang out and be in New York. Um, so I have quite a few things to haul. 
classic. Um, I'm gonna start with all this, all this accoutrement, all this pottery. Pottery. <laughs> so <laughs> I bought so much pottery, and I think I will. I think I will refrain from doing it in future simply because, and I've done this before, mm. so I probably won't stop, but it's like hard to travel. Like you guys know, I only travel with a carry-on and a backpack. Mm-hmm. And so putting pottery safely and carry, like it's <laughs> scary. <laughs> I'm scared. But it worked. <laughs> Nothing broke. Everything's fine. So what do I have to complain about? Um, but yeah, so Kaylee took me to a craft fair called Renegade, Ooh. which is apparently like a really big New York craft fair that happens every year. And she goes to every year and she says that it happens on the same weekend in November every year. Cool. Um, and so I was like really excited to go. And I talked about it on my own Patreon and I had someone from New York who was like, I'm so sad I missed Renegade this year. Aww. Like it's one of my favorite things. So I was like, it's cool that I got to do that. I didn't realize it was like a little bit of a thing. Um, but there were so many amazing crafters there, and I just got a little carried away. <laughs> um, so here's what I got. The first thing is this tiny little vase, Raylene. So cute. <laughs> it's a tiny little flower vase. Oh it's so beautiful. And yeah, that's going to go straight onto the old bookshelf. I got these two perfect coasters. Um <gasps> Oh my god. Oh, I want that frog. (laughs) I know. They're unbelievably beautiful coasters. They're blue and white. And basically, my guest room is decorated all in blue and white. Oh, yeah. And so I just thought it would be fun. When I saw these, I was like, these would be perfect for the guest room. And they're so happy. Uh, I love them. (laughs) Happy little animals. Um, Another mission, like a side mission that I had, was I really wanted to get some or at least just i just wanted one but i ended up getting two of the like like a spoon rest oh yeah you know like when you're cooking mm-hmm. and you need to put your fork down and you're like where do i put this <laughs> yes <thing?"> yes <laughs> so basically i got i was given a no you it was you it was you the pumpkins that yeah, you gave me the strange pumpkins. i ended up using one of those as a spoon rest oh, good. i've never used a spoon rest before game changer yeah. game changer yeah we yeah so i was like i want one so first of all i found this perfect one it's Ooh. so pretty um and it's just like really a perfect little pottery mm-hmm. item it you is. know so i was very happy with this one but then i also saw this one and it's like weird and <laughs> super weird messed up and i was like oh yeah that's it cool looks stuff. like a shell or something it does kind of look like a shell you're right love it um and then kaylee hyde mm. That's sweetie pie. <laughs> she gave me two little things when I got to her apartment. The first one was this little plate Aww. that is from Peggy's Cove, no Nova way. Scotia. She found it at, a, I think she said at a thrift shop somewhere. That's amazing. And she was like, I wanted you to have it. And I was like, I can't even explain to you how much I love this. And I think actually this would be a perfect spoon rest. It would. I was just so, going to say, all you've got is little plates. <laughs> all I got was spoon rest. So I got three spoon rests never no spoon will ever be unrested in my home um kaylee also gave me oh my god the (gasps) cutest little house don't you have a little house like that i have a house really similar to this it looks familiar Uh, um yeah and so this is going to live next to that other one on my bookshelf because i think that it's just the sweetest thing i've ever seen i'm obsessed and kaylee has one that's really similar so i said we're neighbors (laughs) A classic area um, joke. Okay. I also got this very lovely candle Ooh. from the new savant. I don't know. Do you remember Ingrid Nielsen on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Her candle yeah, company. Yeah. She, I love Ingrid. She's so cool. And we got, we met on like a cool YouTube project once and she was just the sweetest person I've ever met. Mm. She was so lovely. So, so lovely. And she's like really pivoted away from YouTube fully into making candles. And I respect the hell yeah, out of that i awesome. think it's so so cool um and she you know makes all of the scents herself pours them herself i think now they have like a couple of employees as well mm. which is lovely um but i've always wanted to get one of her candles but the shipping to canada is kind of expensive yeah. so when i saw her there i was like oh ingrid you're at renegade i went up to her stand and i said oh, hi and i got to meet her girlfriend with erica which was really great oh that's so fun um and then i picked this one california christmas Ooh. I have something what to say. What does that smell like? Yeah, okay. Well, the scents are desert air, sun-baked sea salt, 
California oranges, cognac, and caramelized sugar. Mm. So it's kind of like a sweet, slightly that. tropical citrusy vibe. Cool. It's really nice. Um, I have something to say. Nobody <laughs> should buy a metal tin candle if all you have is carry-on. <laughs> Every single airport destroyed my bag. Oh, no. And they're like, do you have a candle in here? I'm like... Yeah, I looked it up online. I'm allowed to have a candle. And they're like, we got to we gotta swab that. We got to check it. What? And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, America. That's okay. crazy. A <laughs> you, candle. If you want to check my candle, candle, you can check my candle. That's funny. That actually um, reminds me, Ariel also bought me a candle and I didn't haul it because I've been using it. So I forgot. Oh, it's, good. It's not yes, in the I room buy with you me. <laughs> I bought, what was it? Gingerbread? It's gingerbread. Oh, it smells so good. Mm, yeah. That it's real good. nice. Real nice. Yeah, so I'm really glad that I have this candle because I have really been wanting to support mm -hmm. that brand, the new Savant, but I uh, learned a lesson, a valuable lesson. Never buy a metal <laughs> <Don't> candle. <do> <laughs> to carry on. Um, okay. I also, I, okay, so I started looking for a Christmas ornament mm. that was somehow New York-y. Okay. I was, I've started collecting. I really love, I have this tiny Christmas tree that's on my desk. I really love my tiny Christmas yeah. tree. And it's covered in ornaments that like really mean a lot to me that I've gathered. Like one of them is flowers from one of my best friend's wedding mm. that I've put in a little jar. One of them I got when I went to Monet's house. One of them I got, ah, whatever. They're like all like really meaningful to me. Yeah. And I've like love like getting them in different places and stuff. And so I thought, I love New York. I love visiting my friends in New York. I would love to have like a Christmas New York ornament. I couldn't find anything that I liked. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just buy one for the sake of buying yeah. one. Um, but I couldn't find anything that I liked and that didn't feel like tacky or stupid. Yeah, just like a keychain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then we were decorating Kaylee's apartment for Christmas. Oh, nice. And she was unwrapping all of her ornaments. And she gave me one of her ornaments. <gasps> and I just feel so touched. And Aww. now it's like even better than having bought one there. Yeah. Um, given to me straight by Kaylee Hyde. I mean, it couldn't be more prestigious if I tried. <laughs> but look at how happy this Christmas oh, ornament so is. Oh, it's so cute. Really. It's a perfect New York Christmas ornament. The Statue of Liberty has a little Santa hat on. Are, those, the are they candles? The bridges on the back. They look, no, they're like, <laughs> they kind of look waxy, but they're, yeah, they have little uh, metals rods at the oh, top okay. that I think I are supposed to be like the lightning rods or I whatever. Um, yeah, that's perfect. I love it. I love it so much. And then I also went to the, uh, I also went to Chicago. Mm. Yeah, and this is that. like the only thing I bought in, Ch actually, no, I bought two things in Chicago. Hold on. I just remembered the other one's over here. I went to Chicago for a couple reasons. First of all, it was somehow cheaper to fly through Chicago than it was to fly directly back to Halifax. I don't understand it, but that is the what universe it was. just wanted you to go there. Yeah, but then the other big reason is I've been dying to go to Chicago because of the miniature rooms. Uh, did I talk about this? I must have. Yeah, I did. Oh, I mean, I you definitely talked books. about them before cuz you know, you yeah, talked yeah. about miniatures a lot. <laughs> because you won't shut up about miniatures <laughs> you know um yeah so basically i went to the art institute of chicago because they have these beautiful intricate miniature rooms called the thorn rooms they were created by this woman named narcissa thorn uh a genius <laughs> and she yeah did like and now i've forgotten how many but it's like two or three dozen of these miniature rooms. you're gonna say hundred more than that oh it was, that was scary it for was, a second it no it was actually closer to like a hundred Wow. I would guess, hmm, what would I guess? <laughs> I think it was like 70. I wow. should really That's double hardcore. check that. But they're so Narcissus beautiful. Narcissus is not messing around. Yeah, I'm just obsessed. I spent probably an over an hour in the one exhibit that I think most people, like, actually, I don't think, I know. Because I was there for so long, I saw people and they'd be like, wow, this is so cool. And they'd look at two of them and then leave. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> amateur. <Fools. laughs> um, I was looking at every single one. I was like, I am taking this in. This yeah. is why I came to Chicago. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> When I go to the gift shop, there was no miniatures, which That's I just concerning. think is so weird. Like, I just feel like I really respect merch that's done well mm -hmm. or is clever in some way. And the idea that they weren't selling like miniature chairs, yeah, miniature chair ornaments, or a little chair that has says Thor the Thorn Rooms yeah. on it, or that says the Art Institute of Chicago on a little couch, something. Yeah. I'm like. 
I don't understand why it's part of their permanent collection. Like I don't yeah, understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. And I asked a person. I was. I found a person. I was like, "Hi, I'm just wondering. <laughs> like, do you have anything to do with the thorn rooms in the gift shop? This is a huge yeah. gift shop." And he was like, "Uh, the only thing is that one book at the back, which mm. I already own. Yeah, obviously. Duh. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and I was like, "Damn, okay, no problem." Aww. And he was like are you Ariel? And I was like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. I was like, I'm just really into miniatures. And he was like, I've seen your videos. I was like, I'm just like really into miniatures. Like, I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. It's that's not like hilarious. a thing I do for the videos. It's my real life. I'm in Chicago yeah, to look me. at miniatures. <laughs> um, but after I looked at the miniatures for a really long time, I then just did the rest of the museum. It was beautiful. I loved it. The Art Institute of Chicago. I mean, wow, what a museum. And I got this ornament of Ooh. Nighthawk by Edward oh, Hopper. Okay, I was going to say that. It looks um, familiar. Yeah, this painting. And at the on the back, it says wow. the Art Institute so of Chicago. I know, it's so shiny on the back. <laughs> the other thing that I got there, this is so random. I'm like, but it was only $2. And I was like, I actually really want that. It was a letter opener. <laughs> I just got a letter opener. That was um, random. A, pl- a plastic letter. And I was like, afterwards, I was like, God, you know, I American security is going to take this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it, of course they're going to take this. But they didn't. I don't know how they didn't. The candle they got so distracted deal. by the candle. Yeah. yeah, they got freaked out by the candle. <laughs> um, okay, so now let's transition to books. I got this tote bag. <clears throat> it's a McNally Jackson tote bag. I, anyone who's in New York knows McNally Jackson's where it's at. That's the bookstore chain of our dreams. Yeah. Um, and I really wanted a cool tote bag. And this is a new design. And it's funny because I got this and all of the New York buddies were like, hey, is that a new design? <laughs> I was like, I believe it is because it wasn't there the last time I was there. I really love it. And it's got a really nice little square Ooh, bottom. That's yeah, that's quality tote baggage. The only thing I will say they cheaped out on is not printing the design on the back. Mm. I don't know about that. But... I do that's love tough, it. That's tough. That's tough. That is tough. That is tough. <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk books, baby. Slide my little pile over here. Okay. <laughs> you ever look at your choices and think, what? Uh, anyway. Okay. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes I look oh, at your yeah. choices and I go, what? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, okay. The first one, book that I got is The Death and Life of Great American Cities by Jane Jacobs. What? Exactly. This is actually a book that I've been eyeing for months oh, nice. because me and Connor are really into watching urbanist YouTube videos. Oh. So like YouTube videos from this whole urbanist community of people who make videos about trains and parking and city structure, okay. zoning. Wow. Uh, we've gone deep down this rabbit hole. I mean, I, I, I'm the one who started it. Like, I really like this YouTube channel called Not Just Bikes. Okay. Um, He's a Canadian who moved to the Netherlands and he's like obsessed with how good transit and city planning is in the Netherlands. Um, And so, yeah, so it's like, I really love that subgenre. This book comes up all of the time in these videos. Like everyone's always talking about this book. And so I've been really curious about it. And then I saw it in the shop and I was like, how cool is this? And so I picked it up and I I was like, I don't need to buy this here necessarily. Mm -hmm. But it's about New York by a New Yorker. And the Uh, dedication is one of the coolest dedications ever. To New York City, where I came to seek my fortune and found it by finding Bob, Jimmy, Ned, and Mary, for whom this book is written to. Oh, I love that. So I was like, "Ah, I gotta get it. Yeah. The next book my friends tried to convince me not to buy. They're like, why are you buying that? I was like... I really want it. (laughs) She can't be tamed. (laughs) I just want it. So I bought Swan's Way by Marcel Proust. (laughs) Silly. (laughs) I just wanted it. Um, My buddy Proust, we go way back to two weeks ago when I read his letters. (laughs) And I was like... I, I started reading... I wanted this specific edition because it's the one translated by Lydia Davis. Oh, yeah. I really like the first lines. And I was like, I'm just going to buy it. I'll figure out the suitcase problems <laughs> later. Okay. It's the first line is, for a long time, I went to bed early. 
great first line but then it keeps going sometimes my candle scarcely out my eyes would close so quickly that i did not have time to say to myself i'm falling asleep and half an hour later the thought that it was time to try to sleep would wake me i wanted to put down the book i thought i still had in my hands and blow out my light i had not seized while sleeping to form reflections on what i had just read but these reflections had taken a rather peculiar turn it keeps going and i'm like i'm in it i'm in it to win it marcel you can't, can't got go me. now <laughs> okay marcel okay <laughs> And then I got this. I got Letters to Eugene. <gasps> Letters. By Hervé Gwibert and Eugene Safi. Ooh, we're really pushing me here. Savitskaya. Um, translated by Christine Pacini. From what language? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I like it when it says, like, translated from the French by whoever. Yeah. It doesn't say. So I'm not sure. But I'll figure that out when I read it. <laughs> <laughs> um... These are some letters written back and forth between these two people. And as you know, I'm really into letters right now. I'm mm. in my letters era. Yep. Um, and I just thought it would be fun to read this. And so I started reading the letters in the shop. And again, I did the thing where I was like, <laughs> I was like 10 pages in. And I was like, wait, I should just buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should just buy it. That's okay. Um, okay. So that was at McNally Jackson. But actually, the first bookshop we went to, oh, new favorite bookshop alert, <laughs> ring the bell, uh, love <laughs> new favorite shop, Second, I think it's the second best bookshop in New York. Number one, Seaport McNally Jackson. Yeah. Number two, Center for Fiction. Ooh. So cool. It was. It's in Brooklyn. It's huge. Oh, my God. It's so tall. <laughs> it's so tall. When you're in there, you feel like you're in a gallery. Like, Ooh. it's so tall and long and beautiful. Uh, there's also a cafe, which we didn't sit at, but was really pretty. And it's also like a, um, you can become a member. And the upstairs rooms are all these, like, lounges and stuff for mm -hmm. writers. Mm. It was so cool. That sounds I awesome. got a tour. I was like, can I have a tour? And <laughs> they were like, around. yes, <laughs> you can. I was like, woohoo. Um, it was so beautiful. It was so, so, so beautiful. So I had some, it also was like really well curated and like one entire, like the entire main wall was windows. So it was mm. just so bright. Ah, I loved it. <laughs> loved it. Um, I've decided the next time that I go to New York, I really want to focus on Brooklyn. Like I want to mm. get to know Brooklyn better because I feel like so many of my favorite things that I experience in New York are in Brooklyn. Okay. And I, I want to know it better. But anyways, that's just an aside. Um, <laughs> okay. The first book that I picked up was Funny Weather, Art Ooh. in an Emergency by Olivia Lang. This was because Kaylee put say, it in I my hands. I bet Kaylee did that. <laughs> yeah. She was like, you have to read this one. You're going to love this one. You have to get it. And I was like, I trust you. Yeah. And I'm going to okay. get it. Um, yeah. So I honestly didn't look at it very much because i was like this is just a friend's recommendation and i'm just gonna trust her yeah but it sounded really cool um it says in this remarkable inspiring collection of essays the writer and critic olivia lang makes a brilliant case for why art matters especially in the turbulent political weather of the 21st century she profiles Jean-Michel Basquiat, George, uh, George O'Keefe, Maggie Nelson, Sally Rooney, David mm. Bowie, Freddie Mercury. So there's like a huge array of artists that she's talking about. Loneliness, technology, women, alcohol, etc. So a lot of cool topics. And yeah, on the train ride to the bookshop, Kaylee was like, have you read Funny Weather? I was like, no. And she was like, okay, <laughs> we can fix that. I was like, cool. Um, okay, the next one that I picked up there was Seven Empty Houses by Samantha Schweblin. Ah, Have you seen this one? I, I feel like I've come across it, but I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I picked it up and I was like intrigued. I was like, is, this is kind of a play. Seven Empty Houses is like a little bit of a play on the House of the Seven Gables, oh, surely, right? Yeah. Nathaniel Hawthorne, Spooky House. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Reading the synopsis, it says, the seven houses in these seven stories are strange. A person is missing or a truth or memory, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A ghost, a fight, <gasps> trespassers, a list of things to do before you die, all of these things. And I was like, this sounds really cool. And you and I were talking about short stories in a recent episode mm, and how I really yes. don't gravitate towards them. And I have not given that genre like a very good college try. Yeah. And this actually sounded like 
really, really cool. And I, again, I started reading it in the shop and I was like, and I was on page four and I was like, yeah, this is cool. This nice. is interesting. So I thought it would be cool to give a short story collection a go. I approve of that. This one's also translated, right? It's like, yep. I think she's, where is she from? I feel like she's from, I want to say Argentina, but I could be wrong. Buenos Aires, ah. but she now lives in Berlin. Where Very all good. the cool peeps are. Um, okay. This one looks really cool. A Horse at Night on Writing by Ooh. Amina Kane. Ah. Amina Kane wrote that book that I started and was loving but never finished. <laughs> I was going to say, that's another name that sounds familiar. Damn it, Oops. Ariel! <laughs> um, yeah, so this is her book on writing. And you know I love a book on writing. Mm -hmm. You know I do. Mm -hmm. I really do. I know that. And I, again, I started reading it and I was on <laughs> I love the start of it. Without planning it, I wrote a diary of sorts. Lightly. A diary of fiction. Or is it? Or is that not what this is? I wrote about reading fiction and about writing it. Sometimes I read and thought about the books my friends had written. They were my friends partly because I felt great kinship with what they wrote. Sometimes about books by writers I will never know. They are dead or they're alive, but still I won't meet them. It's enough to read their work. I was like, mm. <laughs> yep, she you're speaking <laughs> my Changwich, as Ben Chang would say. Anyway, um, <laughs> love that. Also love the shape of it. It's like weirdly square. Yeah. We're having that thing for our video listeners where the sun is setting right on my <laughs> eyeballs. So it's just like really bright over here. <laughs> She's going through a lot right just now. Really thought that I should uh, mention that. Okay. The final bookshop that we went to, we went to so many shop, bookshops that day. I think we went to like four bookshops that day. Um, the final bookshop that we went to was another McNally Jackson, a new one mm -hmm. near Rockefeller okay. area. And it was really cool. Recommended if you're in that zone. Doesn't beat Seaport. <laughs> Nothing but if will. you like the feeling of being in a maze of books, oh. where you're like a little like, how do I get out? Who cares? <laughs> That's the one. Nice. Got to go to that one. Really great stationary section as well. Okay. This one. Got really? What the hell was I doing? I got another short story collection. Whoa. I was in a mood. Oh my God. I was in, a, I was in New York. I was feeling cool. Mm -hmm. I was feeling cooler <laughs> than I am. That's what happened. Um, the House Guest and Other Stories by Amparo. Oh. oh, I can't read the cursive on this. Daniela, I think it's. I've been have curious you seen about one? that one. Yes, I have seen that. Yeah, it's, it's very really intriguing. beautiful. Really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It says. God, I'm trying to remember why. I remember I picked this up, started flipping through. I was like, that sounds really cool. Mm. But I've I've bought enough books today. Put it <laughs> yeah. back down. Walked away. Three minutes later, I was like, hmm, still thinking about that. Went back, picked it back up, started reading it. I was like, this is kind of intriguing stuff. I was like, nope, we don't need this. Yeah. Put it back down. Walked away. <laughs> Walked back to it. It was like, I'm buying the book. I'm buying it. I'm buying the book. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> um and now i of course cannot recall why i was so excited about it but i do <laughs> yeah, feel that's usually it's funny because i feel the feeling of it i feel the excitement still when i look at the book but i don't remember exactly which story it was that excited me mm. i think a big part of it was that it's like translated from spanish i think that's cool amparo de Vila was born in mexico in 1928 which is cool mm. hmm. and it's translated by matthew gleason okay hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very good. Uh, okay. This is interesting, Raylene. I got... Oh, God. Some, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at I'm my life. I zoomed out for a second. I'm zooming back in. <laughs> 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media oh. Accounts Right Now mm -hmm. by Jaron Lanier. Now, you might be thinking what I'm thinking. Don't you already own this book? Yeah. I do. I definitely do. Did you do. give it to someone? But... No, I did not. I can now. But two things. First of all, love this edition so much more than my edition. Oh. My edition is like a hardcover kind of cheap edition. Oh. You know when you feel like a cheap hardcover book? Yeah. It's like not it's kind of cracky. Yeah. It's not no. Good. This is like a lovely little paperback. Um, I just like I just was so excited by the form factor mm. of the book. Okay. But that's not the reason enough for me to buy it. The actual reason I bought it is there's a new afterword. Oh. There's like expanded, like I'm basically enough to be like a whole new chapter. And I was like, damn it, you got <laughs> You got me. You again. got me good. <laughs> you got me good. Okay, the last book. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so sorry i okay so i bought this book 
I picked it up, put it down, picked it up, put it down, mm-hmm. picked it up. And then I said to Kaylee, I looked her in the eye and I said, we need to leave. I'm buying books and I don't know why anymore. <laughs> and she was like, I, you're right. Let's go. <laughs> we left the oh shop. my gosh. So you were losing it's control. Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. Oh. Why did I buy this? Yeah. Not too sure. Not too sure. <laughs> Loved the cover. I think that was, it was a it's cover nice, buy. It was yeah. a cover buy. That's what happened. It was a cover buy. Um, but like, so, so it says, Nausea is the story of Antoine Rocotin, a French writer who is horrified at his own existence. Mm. In impressionistic diary form, he ruthlessly catalogs every sen- sensation. His thoughts culminate in a pervasive, overpowering feeling of nausea, which, quote, spreads at the bottom of the vicious puddle at the bottom of our time, the time of purple suspenders and broken chair seats. It is made of wide, soft instances spreading at the edge like an oil stain. And I was like, oh, that actually sounds really cool. And then I read the first few lines and I was really into it. And I, so I was like, okay, I am going to buy this, but we need to leave now Pull because I'm out. making irresponsible decisions. Uh, so this is my, God, I always love my New York hauls. I always get the coolest it's shit. It's always so wild. <laughs> oh, God, no. Um, yeah, so this is my pile of books that I got in New York City. Very good. Then I went to Chicago. Oh, no. There's more. I didn't buy anything. Oh. I didn't buy anything. <laughs> I was like, I was oh, like, we're on the other side. <laughs> uh, nope. I was like, I have bought more than enough. Yeah. I am very happy with the choices that I made. I did go to some bookshops in Chicago um, and I really enjoyed them. There were some really beautiful bookshops, but I didn't buy anything because I was like, I don't need anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was like, I'm just going to have to shove it in my backpack. Yeah. And already yeah. I'm super hyped by the pile that I have. So I really, constr- I was proud of myself. I was like, nope, I don't need, I'm good. I'm <laughs> I don't good. need anymore. I will just say though, loved Chicago. It was really cool. Obsessed with the L train. Ooh. The L train was so cool. I don't know if you know this, uh, Raylene or anyone Probably listening, not. but it's called the L train because it's elevated. What? Of course. <laughs> Genius. Obviously, most systems of a subway are like subterranean yeah. or underground, the London Underground. And this did have some stops and stations that were underground, but most of the train is the L train, which is like above the city. And uh, you're riding the trains and you're just looking at the buildings in the actual downtown. It was so cool. Yeah. It was so cool. And it just like further emphasized why... So many of the lies we're told about why we can't have good trains are lies. Like when people are like, we'd have to dig up the whole city. I'm like, no, you don't. Look at what Chicago did. Yeah. (laughs) It's a beautiful system. Um, And it was so, it was so convenient. Like I was able to walk to a stop um, within four, it was always a station, like within four minute walk. Mm. I'd like walk over, get on the train, ride it for 10 minutes, be in another part of town, go to a bookshop, go to a stationery store, whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. So Chicago was a really cool city. I'm glad I went. I did have deep dish pizza. Ooh. It was delicious, <laughs> very filling. And I would say that it was not windier than any other city I've ever been in. Yeah. So I've that's, that's a lie. That is, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> All right, let's uh, cap off this episode by talking about what we are reading and what we have read. You start us off, Raylene. Yeah, so I've read a bunch of books, but I'm only going to talk about a couple of them. Mm-hmm. I um, Because my birthday, like leading up to my birthday, I was like, I'm going to get some books. Like, I know that that's going to happen. And so yeah. I was like, I should try and read as many books as I possibly can. So I just like oh, read all fun. of the unread like manga I had and a couple of graphic oh, novels. Okay. So I'm not going to talk about any of those because nothing really worth mentioning. But it was mm-hmm. it was fun. It was fun. I read like yeah, five cool. books like in a couple of days. But then after that, I was like, okay, it's my birthday. And on my birthday, one of the things I wanted to do was just read all day and like yeah. have food and drinks brought to me and not leave the house. <laughs> that was my birthday dream. I love and so that. that's what I did. And so I had cool. this mental image of like, I'm going to read three books and it's going to be yeah. great. Um, it didn't happen. I only read half of a book because I kept getting sidetracked. Mm. But the book that I decided to read on my birthday was The Blue Castle by L.M. Montgomery. The Blue Castle is one of Montgomery's few novels written for adults and is the only book she wrote that is entirely set outside of Prince Edward Island. The book has Mm. been adapted for the stage twice, first as a Polish musical in 1982, then again a decade later by a Canadian playwright. If you'd like to read a strikingly similar novel, try Colleen McCullough's 1987 novel The Ladies of Missalonghi. The Australian author has actually been accused of plagiarism due to her novel's resemblance to The Blue Castle. 
So I learned some fun facts about the Blue Castle Juicy. looking at its Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, I remember reading that and I was like went down that rabbit hole and she was like, I think maybe I subconsciously yeah. stole that story She's from like, child. She's like, it was subconscious. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. Ooh, yeah, that's tough. Boy. But um, yeah, so this was a big moment for me, for us, for the podcast, for me reading yep. The Blue Castle. And yep. um, you and I have talked about it already a little bit. So luckily, you know, the, the, the blow has been softened. But I didn't yes. love it. Like, I liked it. But it definitely doesn't hit me the same way that it does for you. And yeah. now that I've, it sounds weird, but like now that I've read it, I understand why. Like I understand why you love it so much. And I also yes. completely understand that it's like not a book for me. And I need mm -hmm. to just stop reading books solely because my friends love them because we have different tastes. We have different tastes. Yeah. Um, it's really funny because I was, we were talking about this and I was like, it, it does happen quite often where I read a book and really, really love it. And I but I so don't excited. think it's a Raylene book. Yeah, yeah. And like, but then sometimes I'll read a book and really, really love it. And I'm like, you will love this yeah, as well. Yeah. Like we know each other pretty well, but there's loads of books that you read that you love that I'm like, exactly. just because she loved it doesn't you. mean I would exactly. like it. Yeah. So I'm trying, I'm, that's like a goal for me for 2024 is just to like, you know, like, I don't know, trust my instincts more. Like just because a friend yeah, loved yeah. it doesn't mean I'm going to love it. So I need to like think about these things a little bit more. But anyway, <laughs> it was it was a fun little read, though. Like it definitely was kind of like had lots of like twists and turns kind of yeah. it is dramatic. Um, for those who may not remember, it's about a 29 year old woman, which is another reason why I wanted to read it on my birthday, because cool. the main totally. character is 29 and it's set, you know, like in the 20s or whatever. And so she's unmarried. And so she's like an outcast. Everybody thinks she's a lunatic. A loser. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big loser. <laughs> And her family is crazy. Like, they're all yeah, so they weird are. and mean. And like, and so she finds out that she only has a year to live. And so she goes mm. off and is like, I'm just going to go live my life. And so that concept to me is fantastic. Yeah. Um, the book just wasn't like as, I, I guess I was thinking she was going to be more adventurous, but it's a classic okay. novel. And so her being adventurous was like, I'm going to just like live without my family and yeah you know it was which it, is it, yeah, yeah exactly like, it in, in my head it was gonna be a context. lot more dramatic than it actually was but it was like oh yeah no this is more of like a tame kind of like classic novel like historical version of like a woman being a little bit wild um and she yeah yeah so i guess it was yeah have you a little bit did different. you reread the first time you read pride and prejudice you didn't like it right that's a thing i've only read it once and i didn't like it yeah Right, right. So this is to me like it makes so much sense. I'm like the fact that Raylene has read Pride and Prejudice and didn't like it, and then reads The Blue Castle and likes it but doesn't love it. Yeah, I'm like those two things have something to do with one another. I know. I was actually thinking that like this was it was making me think of Jane Austen while I was reading it. Like yeah. it, it's in the same family, I would say, totally. as Jane yes. Austen novel. So I would say yeah. like if you love Jane Austen, definitely check this book out. Yeah, um, it's just yeah, it's totally different from Anne of Green Gables. Obviously. Like totally different yeah, type of which setting. Is cool, right? Yeah, it is yeah. it is cool. It's definitely cool and I, I can see why you love it and I definitely think other people would love it. It's just like not not for me. It's just not for me. Yeah. Um so then That's after okay. I read that, I decided I wanted to read something um totally different <laughs> and something <laughs> short, and that would be like a quick read. And so I read After the Quake by Haruki Murakami. After the Quake was first published in Japan in 2000, with the English translation being released in 2002. It is a collection of six short stories, all set in February 1995, which was the month between the Kobe earthquake and the Tokyo gas attacks, both very real events in Japan's history. Each of the characters from the stories live far away from the physical devastation of the earthquake and only witness it on TV, but for each of them, the event becomes a turning point in their lives. So I, first of all, I didn't realize this was short stories. And before I read mm. it, I also didn't realize it was kind of based around true events. I didn't know anything yeah. about the book. I've just been like buying all of Murakami's books and wanting to read them. Yeah. So I didn't really know anything about it. And knowing that now makes me like love the book more and wish I had read it sooner. I, oh. I definitely think this would be a good place to start for people who haven't read Murakami because it's oh, not too crazy in any direction. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Like there's only one story that kind of has some kind of fantastical elements. There's a giant frog and it's oh, awesome and he fun. can talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. great. That was probably my favorite story just because it was so wacky and weird and I love frogs. So it was it was really fun. You do um, love frogs. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I read it just like in two sittings. It was a very quick, easy read. It's one of his shorter books. Like it's very small. It's only like 140 pages, I think. 
And mm. yeah, it was really good. And I, I loved that all the stories were connected to one event. So they were connected to each other without really being connected with, to each other. Like none of the characters know each other or ever talk to each other or meet each other or anything. But their their whole lives are all kind of like at the points in their story, they're all kind of revolving around this earthquake. But they're also so far right. away from it that a lot of people like will just mention it and then they forget about it. So it's like this crazy thing that happened, mm. but they're like, yeah whatever just gonna go on with my life now hmm. um so yeah it was an interesting little book and uh, yeah like i said i had no idea what it was about before i read it so it was a nice treat that it was short stories and cool yeah so i think it, it would be a good place to start and i'm really that's glad cool. that i read another book by him because as yeah, you remember awesome. norwegian wood was the book i read at the very beginning of this year and totally. loved it and i've been wanting to read another book by him since then so i'm glad yeah. i squeezed another one in before the end of the year have you read The Strange Library? Yes. That was actually probably that, the first book of his I read. Oh, okay. Was so that was small. one book that I picked up and put down and picked up and put down <laughs> a few times in the final McNally Jackson. And that was part of the reason why I said to Kaylee, we got to go. Because yeah. I was yeah. like, uh, I, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to end up buying that and this. And I was like, we got to just yeah. get out of here. But That is a good one, though. I do think that it's a good place to start with him. I would think so. It's been a long time since yeah, I read it. Like I was, it's so short. It, it's really short, and it is really strange. Um, mm. But I think it's it's definitely like readable, and it's not so strange that you like don't understand what's happening. But it is kind of just like this really short, like wacky <laughs> ride. Yeah, and yeah, I I don't own it anymore, which makes me sad. I don't know why I got rid of it, but I I had it when I was like sixteen, so I was like, ah, what's oh, this? Oh, ages ago. Yeah, cool. like I think I was sent a copy of it by Random House or something, and it was very fun. Huh. Anyway. That's a story for another day. But yeah, no, that one I think would be a good place to start because that is where I started and I was intrigued enough to be like, yeah, I'll read another book by him. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, cool. Well, it's, uh, so those are the ones that you wanted to talk about this week. Yeah, read. I guess I could tell you what okay. I'm reading. I'm still just yeah. at the very beginning, so I don't have much to say, but this is going to be exciting for you. You're going to love this. Oh. Ugh, I'm oh reading A God. Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Woo! Shannon. <laughs> Yeah! I know, this got so excited the camera moved. <laughs> I accidentally yanked on my headphones cord. It kind of hurt, but that's okay. I stand by it! <laughs> yes. So, I yeah, I started this wow. a few days ago, and I've only read, like, maybe about 100 pages of it. It's almost 900 pages long. It's so big. So I've actually been reading it on my e-reader because I can't, like, physically, physically hold, hold it. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, too, it's too big. Um, wow. Yeah, so I'm still in the early stages, and so far I would say... I like it, but I'm not loving it yet. Ooh. And it's mostly because I'm confused. I'm not confused, but like oh. there's just so many characters that I'm like trying to keep a grasp on like who yeah. everyone is. Because in the Priory of the Orange Tree, that's a thing too. But like mm. I found that I got a grasp on it a little bit more quickly with this one. I feel like there's just so many names hmm. and characters and they're really thrown into it like kind of the, a history of one family like it's like okay here's the yeah. character and then she had a baby and then she grew up and then she had a baby Oof. and then she grew up and then she had, and so you're like whoa 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 who am i supposed to be f like it, it was just a, yeah. a lot all at once i'm like okay. who am i supposed to be paying attention to like what is the story yeah. that matters here so i'm still just yeah getting a handle on it but I okay. think it's going to be good. I think I'm I'm reaching a point now where things are starting to like happen and people are starting to like go off on their own little journeys and whatnot. So I'm excited. I'm excited about it. That's cool. No, I'm really excited that you're doing that. You know, I love it when you read. I know <laughs> it's like your favorite thing for some reason. <laughs> it's most my favorite thing. It's just because like, I think a big part of it is nostalgia. Just like I remember when we were younger, you used to read a lot more fantasy mm -hmm. and I know how much joy it brings you. And like lately you haven't been able to read as much for whatever reason. So yeah. I think it's just nice when you go back to your roots. It is nice. Um, and my one of my goals for this year, as I've said many yeah. times, is to read six fantasy books. This will be number four. So I still have to oh, read two more after if, <laughs> when I get through this one. So, okay. That's really, oh. That's exciting. I'm so excited for our end of the year episodes. Um, it's going to be wild. Yeah, once yeah, all is revealed. Someone, you said that we had a message from one of our patrons mm -hmm. that said that she yeah, was Luna. really looking forward from yeah. Luna. Mm -hmm. Luna, thank you. Uh, Luna said, like, uh, we're really looking forward to our end of the year episodes. You can yeah. tell that they're coming, uh, which are there. just like the wrap ups and everything. But also, uh, yeah, Luna was really nice. Said that she feels like this has been the best year of the pod yet. Yeah. And I, I agree. That. Luna, we've had so much fun <laughs> with the podcast this year. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm in the middle of three things. Whoa. I haven't finished anything in the last. I've just been so busy traveling that I just yeah. didn't read as much as I thought I might. But on audio, I am listening to On Writing by Stephen what? King. 
I know. I just was like, what do I want to listen to right now? And for some reason in my brain, I was like, I could reread on writing. And I was like, let's just go with that. And I started listening to it. And I was like, wow, this was the right decision. Yeah. It's so much fun. I love books about writing and writers. Mm. And like, yeah, I just, I really enjoy that whole genre. So I'm really enjoying that. That's fun. I'm also working through Kafka was the rage still. And I'm still really enjoying it. Nice. I just didn't have a chance to really read a physical book this week oh, like yeah. this i was listening to a bit on audio this i brought with me as a physical book and i read a couple more pages but i just was like never yeah. had it on me really but still really enjoying it and then this i just started last night letters <gasps> to a young poet by rainer maria rilke which you might recall i bought a couple of months ago mm -hmm. um and now that i'm into letters i'm like wait i have the perfect yeah, one to weirdly read perfect. next I know it's weirdly perfect and I started it last night because I just couldn't sleep but I couldn't turn the light on because my boyfriend was next to me mm. but I had my phone so I just started reading it on my phone because <gasps> um, wow. I was away from home so I didn't have my e-reader but I started reading it on my phone and so that's why again <laughs> I didn't wasn't reading the physical thing like, otherwise I would have read this right. more but I was like I need something new what and then I was like wait a minute letters it's super good so far <gasps> I'm only on letter three two or three though so we'll see i think there's 10 letters or something um but yeah i'll definitely finish this by next week it's so short. nice nice it's like criminally short um but yeah so i'm enjoying that and we'll see we'll see where i get wow look at i you. think i'm gonna be productive this week with reading i'm feeling it in my bones good good <laughs> okay this was a big episode Phew. there was a lot of updates mm -hmm. a lot had to be said a lot had to be done Thank you all so much for listening and hanging out with us as always. We're now going to go record our Patreon mini podcast, mm. The Movie Tub. I almost said the wrong name. I almost said <laughs> Books on Bucket. Oh, man. Over We're so far a past year that. Ago. That was so far <laughs> gone. Um, the Movie Tub, where we talk about the movies and shows that we've been watching. So I'm excited to go do that because we've been watching some stuff. And if you want to support the podcast on Patreon, we're at patreon.com forward slash Books Unbound. Mm. That's the way to do it. There you go. Or follow us on Instagram for updates. Yeah. Or share the pod. <laughs> Dare I suggest you share the pod with a dear friend? I don't know. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.